We are so thrilled to be partnering with Hinge. Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. As you all know, I'm a huge Hinge advocate as I met my partner of almost three years on the app. Even before meeting him, Hinge was always my go-to app because I met more relationship-minded people here and had some great dates. Clearly, I haven't been on the app for a little while, but I re-downloaded it to check out some of the new features. One that stood out to me was the voice prompt, my best friend's take on why you should date me, where your friend can hype you up. Not only does this make the profile creation less daunting, but it's not always easy to see your own green flags. So to test it out, I asked UA some fun prompts to get her take on what I could put if I was dating again. So the first one, how long have we known each other? What was your first impression of me and how has that changed? Julie and I have known each other for almost 10 years. My first impression of Julie was that she's very social, but I've learned that she has a lot more depth to her beyond the social butterfly that she is. My next prompt, what do you think are my green flags? I would say she's deeply loyal. She believes in love, curious mindset, and she is fearlessly ambitious. And then last but not least, what kind of friend am I? Julie is the kind of friend who will always have your back, no matter what. Damn, that feels nice to hear. So download Hinge and try voice prompts today. Then find some one worth deleting the app for. The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. I'm your host, Yue Shu, former dating coach turned a dating sociologist. You'll also hear from my co-host, Julie Kraftchik. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. We are excited you've joined us for an older episode. While our earlier seasons were all about dating in San Francisco, we quickly realized all the themes and learnings are universal for all daters. So we shifted to covering dating from all around the world as the seasons progress. The fun part is things happen first in San Francisco, the tech epicenter and counterculture capital of the world. We love for you to keep tuning in to our older episodes, but there is no set order to listen in. So feel free to jump to more recent seasons or relevant episodes for you. Enjoy the show. I was so excited to get my shipment from Last Bottle Wines in the mail the other day full of incredible red wines all from Napa Valley. I love wine tasting, so having this to my door couldn't be happier. Also couldn't be more excited that today's episode is brought to you by Last Bottle Wines. If you don't know already, they're a Napa-based online wine shop with a twist. They offer just one hand-picked wine per day until it sells out, and they're always at incredible prices. We're talking talking 30 to 70% off retail. And the best part is that there's no subscriptions, no fees, and no minimum purchase. And I could not be more excited to bring this offer right now because they're having a marathon sale, which is coming up March 28th and 29th. Even better, we're offering Dateable listeners 10% off your first order with code Dateable. So if you are a wine lover like me, this is a great time to join. And did I mention that shipping is 100% free? So so what are you waiting for? Mark your calendar for March 28th and 29th or get on it earlier if you want. You can sign up at lastbottlewines.com and use code DATEABLE and find out why Last Bottle is the most fun way to discover and buy amazing wine. The Dateable podcast is hosted by me, I'm Yue, a former dating coach in New York turned active dater in San Francisco. On each episode, you'll hear commentary by my co-host, Michael Vargas, a fellow dating coach with a clinical psychology background, my producer, Julie Kraftchik, and other surprise co-hosts. Hey, don't forget to check out our next event on September 30th. The theme is No Pants, and we will again be doing a live stage performance of the old school TV show, The Dating Game. For more information and to get tickets, head on over to our Facebook page at Dateable Podcast and get $5 off with the code KISSME, all capital letters in one word. This episode of Dateable is brought to you by 500 Brunches. 500 Brunches connects like-minded people with similar interests to meet in real life over brunch. You answer a quick questionnaire about your interests and how you spend your time, and then they'll match you in small groups of six to eight at a brunch spot in San Francisco. Get a free entry into a brunch now by signing up at 500brunches.com and using the code DATEABLE. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Dateable, a show that opens up a candid conversation about dating in San Francisco. 
And Michael Vargas, my co-host, recently got into acro yoga. How did you get into acro yoga? I wanted to be a part of a community uh, out in San Diego. And so I figured that would be one of the easiest things. And so many people in San Francisco were doing it. And uh, I heard that that's a great way to meet a lot of uh, different people, let's just say. It sure is. And it's a, it's a flexible people, flexible people. And it's a great, it's a fast track way to um, really get to know people intimately. Ding, 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 ding. That and dancing. <laughs> but you get to touch all their body parts. All of them. Right. <laughs> the pervert that you just said, all of them. That's our guest today. Ooh, he's there giving you me the death stare. I, <laughs> he's like, what? Did you just call me a pervert? I can't believe I'm nervous right now. Why are you nervous? I don't know. Like, I, I feel like, because we're going to talk about orgy dumb. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. I guess we're talking about orgy dome, yeah, whatever that means. Is that... I don't even know what that is. I'm ready to learn. <laughs> is that like a ride at Disneyland? Orgy dome. <laughs> uh, it, it, it actually show. should be. I think that, aren't they building like a, like a, a Burning Man themed park in, in Las Vegas? How uh, high do you have to be to come up with that idea? It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Okay, Chris, talk about Orgy Dome. I want to hear this story. So Orgy Dome is a camp at Burning Man where they have an orgy. So I, I went to Orgy Dome and I learned a lot and like just said like. But I feel like I, I feel like I need to share this because it was less about the sex and more about the what I learned. Wait, wait, before you go into that, what was it that brought you to even try this in the first place? Oh, because I was with an amazing girl who was uh, into this. Um, open to it, yeah. <laughs> so, did you guys participate? Uh, we didn't do what you're thinking, but we participated. Like we did everything that we were comfortable doing together. Can you share? Um, so, so first, like, let me so let me set the context here. So, like, this is a camp that is like uh, that. Um, puts on like their gift to Burning Man is is an orgy dome and for, please forgive me if like anybody's listening who really knows what they're talking about and I say something wrong I just want to say like this was a, a one-time experience for me and this is my partake on it right um, okay so the first thing for orgy dome is it's a it's its mm -hmm. own camp and there's like three levels you're on the outside and you're in line to get in and when you get in there's I mean, like, there's the first, the first step is you have to go in as, as a male and female pair, right? Even if you're gay, right? So, like, if two girls want to get in, they can't. If two guys want to get in, they can't. You have to find another person that will vouch for you. It has, has to be. be has to be. Because that's the first way to get rid of any weirdos, right? Like, if you can't find somebody of the opposite sex to vouch for you, it's like gets rid of 50%, probably 70% of humans, right? And I thought that was really freaking cool, right? Because it just gets rid of a whole group of people. As opposed to like, a, like 15 creepy guys just coming in at once. Exactly, exactly, right? All 15 have to compete to find a girl that will come with them into the orgy dome, right? Which means they're not getting in. And when you get up to the front of the line, they're very adamant about like, grab your shoulders and you get up to the front of the line and like, do you know where you're going, right? And like you're, you're buying into an experience. You're like, yeah, I'm going to Orgy Dome. What are you gonna do? I don't know, I'm gonna have sex. Awesome, you're on your way in, right? And like they're obviously checking to see if you're like, if you know what you're doing. But what was really cool about that is then they give you a bracelet and you get into the next level. And in the next level, there's basically a mingle area. And when you get in there, you get, you have to go and find someone uh, to get basically a deli ticket, like you're at a deli line, and they're like number twenty five, okay, like, number seven oh two. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they literally have like a freaking clock on the wall that's counting down, like uh, number twenty seven, like through forty, like whatever is coming in, right? And so then when you get in there, you have to find someone to take a class, and the class is very, very simple, but it's incredibly important. And this is probably the biggest thing that I learned that I took away from this is they teach you two things and that's enthusiastic con in, an enthusiastic yes is the only thing that matters in this world right and so mm -hmm. there's no like maybes or kind ofs or playful like oh i kind of want to do that or not mm -hmm. it's a like hey do you want to have anal sex with me yes like yes, yes. Like, yeah. exclamation like, yeah. mark like, yeah like yes right like eye contact like this is happening right this sounds like improv right, right. i i've done one like low level improv class and i totally agree it's very similar right and then and then the other I, thing that they teach right after that and the, and so you have to go to this like 
safety class with a person that asks, that hands out the next level, which is a bracelet that, uh, uh, an armband that says that you've done, been through the class. And it, it doesn't take very long, but we, we were there and I'm expecting so much more. And he, he just says, okay, so there's nothing but an enthusiastic yes. And then he kind of plays it out. And he goes to the, the couple next to us and said, um, what kind of play do you like? And the, the girl, this like tiny brunette and this really tall guy, the girl kind of like recoils a little bit and uh, you know, like, like smiles sheepishly and says like, oh, I don't know. And then he's like, well, describe, like tell me like what kind of play do you like? And what I thought was so amazing about that question in hindsight was that like the thing about play is like play is an incredible concept, right? It has it, that, that permeates all parts of life. There's like, there's a start and an end to play, mm. right? And like, even if you look at animals, like they're practicing life and like, like they're practicing hunting or fighting or, or learning about the environment around them. And the cool thing about play is like whatever happens within the beginning and the end of a play session um, happened in that world, in that context, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to affect the rest of mm. the play, right? Because you're buying into a game, right? You're buying into a scene. And what I thought was so cool about that is like, then they kind of left you to hang out in this place and you're waiting for your deli ticket number to be <laughs> called, right? And so, and then you realize like this, this first level is really like the chance to mingle and meet other numbers, other couples that have your number. So one question I have is you go, you pick a number. And when you pick that number, you already have people that you got that strong yes from. Yeah, great question. Great question. So you're just given the number like when you come in like, and um, that that number is is your ticket into the next level. But when they call it like that range, but then what you have is the that's ba you can leave at any time because you've now taken the class and you're in there. But what 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 you do is then you start trading numbers with people that are in there, because if you are in there for an hour waiting and hanging out because it's a cool, relaxing place and there's obviously these are all people that are bought into the same experience and want to go to the next level with you. Or even if you just want to go in alone, you can trade numbers to get in together right at the next level. Right. So you can try to kind of like go back and forth. Right. And so. Um, so there's this whole like system going on of people meeting each other. What was really cool was when I started to notice that like, like girls were able to come out of their shell because they saw other women being able to describe the kind of play that they liked, right? And, or what they wanted. And it created a free and open environment to kind of talk about things that maybe they wouldn't have been comfortable talking about before, mm -hmm. right? And then, uh, because it's within the context of whatever's happening at that time right and no one's necessarily carrying that with them out and okay so you, you start co-mingling you start meeting these people you start trading numbers saying like hey you're a 207 i want to join you guys you get your number called and then you take a class no you've already taken the class so now now you just get naked and put your clothes <laughs> in a bucket <laughs> wait really you put it in a bucket no like well yeah i mean it's come on it's burning man we're not like i this wasn't like the I, <laughs> You're like naked uh, watch this. I'm going to find out after this. I was at like the not classy orgy dome and there's like another one with air conditioning like or something. Suit and tie. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. Like, Black tie. Like, <laughs> when your number gets called, um, you go to the next level, which is like an entrance where everybody is naked. And then you get into like the inner, which is probably like the actual beginning of orgy dome. And then there's really like three levels within that. There's the like private area where you're not supposed to be watching people and it's kind of like now everyone's naked but you're sitting on sofas or you're behind curtains but it's kind of like you you can't really see like what people are doing right so so you're just getting comfortable with naked bodies at that point exactly yeah exactly and then and then there's some curtains and there's another level which is the see and be seen area and what that is is it's really like areas where people can be comfortable, whether it's beds or couches. And um, if the curtains are open or if they're, if they're looking for someone to join, um, you can, uh, you, you're allowed to watch in that level, but you're not allowed to tap them and ask them to join. And then the next level is, uh, you're, is you're allowed to join. It's like another room. And that is like, if you're, if you're there, you're, they're expecting to be like asked to join. Uh, but again, you need to have enthusiastic consent and you have to like touch someone's shoulder or touch their ankle if you can't reach their shoulder. <laughs> and, uh, and they have to make eye contact and say, yes, you can join us. And it just creates this, 
it's a social tool, right? Mm. Um, I thought it was really, really cool, even though we didn't have an orgy, right? Like we went to the third level, but did nobody joined us? I mean, frankly, the first time I was in there, it, it was hard for me to uh, focus with the noise going on. I mean, like there's a lot of noise. And, uh, and then the third level, the fourth level or the middle is just literally an orgy. So you were, you guys were doing the deed and someone could have tapped you on your shoulder or ankle. They did, yeah. And someone did. Yeah, and the first time I had to like, I had to like reset. <laughs> but you have to say yes. No. It's an enthusiastic yes. Uh, everything else is a no. If you're, if you're on a bed and you're doing something and you don't respond, that's a no. Oh. And it's a chance to just say what you like, right? And, and without any judgment. Right. I mean, they I literally was sitting in the main room with the girl that I was with at the time. A guy comes up and I think he's going to talk to her and he taps me <laughs> on the knee. He taps me on the knee and says, um, hi, um, what kind of play do you like? And I, I have no idea what kind of play I like because I just I like normal P like P and V. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I just I've never had to think about this before. I don't know. I just kind of done stuff. And uh, so I. Um, I literally, I don't think I said anything. And he goes, oh, well, I'd like to be your coffee table. And would you let me be your coffee table? And I'll, I'm like, uh, what, does that uh, what, does that <laughs> what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? He just wanted to sit on his hands and knees and have somebody put his legs on his back. Wait, what's his name? Because there's a, there's a guy. Know. This is a burning man. There is a guy in San Francisco who's famous for um, being furniture for people. Oh, God. There's a lot of people that like to be <laughs> furniture. <laughs> That's a weird I, kind of issue. That, yeah. Chris, one of the things I want to know is... I'll just answer the question. You know, I, he, d he did not end up being my coffee table. Darn. Just to clarify. Darn. Just he was just couch instead. Yeah, I already had a coffee table. Earlier you said that you were going to go in with kind of particular guidelines or you had ideas of what you were going to do with this girl that you were with. So what were those guidelines that you were going in with originally? Oh, wow. Great. Um, I mean, with the enthusiastic consent thing between other people, I think if you're going to do this with somebody and they're important to you, um, is uh, you, you have to have a level of communication. You have to have s communication tools already intact because you can't make assumptions. When you open yourself up to this type of environment, if you rely on what you rely on in the normal, in the real world, mm -hmm. like there's just, yeah. if you make any assumption that that was okay with you, I mean, if anything, this definitely exemplified to me what, what women or maybe feminists talk about when they talk about with, with uh, withdrawing consent later. Mm -hmm. Like, I never really understood that as a male, where in my mind it's like, you've had sex, you could have said no. Right. Well, like that definitely now has meaning to me, right? Mm -hmm. Because you, if you're in an environment where everyone's already doing things and like one thing is okay, um, but that's why enthusiastic consent is so amazing because anything but a yes is a no. So, so wait, I'm still waiting to hear, like what was it that you were going in for? What was your guideline? My guidelines were that we wouldn't, uh, we actually would not participate in um, a threesome or anything until the second time we went in. And we would just, we would, we would check everything out and get a lay of the land. Uh, I think we went twice and both times were amazing. And then we kind of tested out the waters in San Francisco and uh, didn't go as, as well. Was this someone you were dating or just an activity partner? I'd say dating. Okay. I'd probably be the an activity partner. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at the <laughs> activity partner. So yeah, see, that's what that's probably what I have now in, in San Francisco is activity partners. So you said that it didn't translate in San Francisco. Do you think it was like something about being away and like the moment of Burning Man that made this like more of a unique... I, I, I do think it translates to certain environments. I mean, we actually came back and went to a couple of the different clubs here in the city and I was really surprised to see that there's this entire community of people that are outside of what I have seen. Right. That I wouldn't even say it's underground, I'd say that it's just out in the open here and it's really healthy. I think it's very, very healthy, but I think, um, but I think the one problem that you run, that I ran into is I assumed because this seemed so healthy to me and so new that that meant the people that you're dealing with are just as healthy. But the problem is you're still dealing with other humans. So there's an ability to like make a mistake, right? So like, it wasn't necessarily the environment of Burning Man, but just the other humans. That well, for me it was because that's where I was introduced 
to it. Okay. And I definitely think Burning Man is the place. I mean, if I could have picked right. a place in my mind, because the entire landscape and world you're in is different. From what I've learned about those type of, of communities, right, the BDSM, the orgy communities, I got to give them all credit because it's very much about communication. Like, that's something that's so important to them. Like, if you're, for another example, if you're getting whipped, you want to make sure the person who's whipping you that you can 100% trust them because right. that allows you to go right. fully into the experience. And, and that's, that's what I mean by when you, I almost feel like I went into that world, saw it, and then when you carry that to a bar in the marina, <laughs> and you sit in the corner and you or you're in the mission even and you're you're at a bar and you're watching guys hit on girls and groups of girls pretend to not want to be hit on like it almost is like it is just this it it's I could I could literally cut through it with a knife that wanting to just go up and be and, and tell a girl hey like you want to be hit on tonight like you want someone to go home with that you trust that's safe that's secure that is sure of themselves that knows what they want you just can't communicate it and hey guy you don't have to be a douchebag right like you don't have to be this like king of the pack and be more have more bravado than the other nine guys around to be seen right but you, what, what i'm hearing you say is it's as simple as tapping someone on the shoulder and be like do you want to play i've actually done that here now I know one of the things that I love doing um, when meeting women and, and looking to date someone is just fucking having fun and like finding like an improv. There's a thing called finding the game. And what that is, is you and I are doing something like a pattern or something where we're both involved and we're both enjoying it and we both know what's going on. That's the, like the game that we create and that's us having play and fun. And it's just so much more enjoyable for both people if we're just having play and having fun like that. Right. I get, I totally get this in like a hookup sense, a hundred percent. But do you think that this direction, if you're looking for more of a relationship would translate at all? I mean, there's some playful. Hell yes. Yes. Hell yes. I think those are the best. I think those are the relationships that are able to last the longest when they're still able to have fun and play yes. and yep. enjoy each other. I am very careful about my words in the beginning. I don't want to come off too casual or too right. playful so my, because I want to be taken seriously. That, yeah, and, I, and that's what I was, I was also talking to uh, when I said, hell yeah, I was talking about the idea of the idea of play and not just play sexually, but having <laughs> like play with, the, with your souls, like you yeah. and her or you and him or whatever can just have genuine fun and genuine play. Like for me, I don't even want to, I don't take a girl, um, I won't get serious with a girl if I can't have fun with her and play with her. So uh, what I'm hearing, I'm going to do takeaways now. I think we should just be more playful with each other. I think removing that barrier of the fear of rejection at a bar or at an event, just go up and talk to someone in the most playful way, mm -hmm. thinking back about Thinking back on when you're in the sandbox, you know, when you're kids and you just go up to a kid and you're like, let's play. Right. And if they say no, then you I go on to the next kid. I would refine that. I would refine that just one level more. And I would say, um, try, if you ever, if, if you have a chance, it's fun, it's exciting. If you validate someone that you want to be with and they're new, or, or, heck, even if you've dated them for a long time, Ask them what kind of play they like and yeah. see what they say. Um, I do think there's a line though between what I just described with play and being playful because I think when you, it's a large gray area, but being playful, I think that word gives a connotation of being um, haphazard or uh, willy nilly or like That's having stable. no boundaries. Whereas this play has a very defined start and finish, what I described with Orgy Dome. Um, so, I don't think there's any excuse for being a bad person, bad human, right? Mm -hmm. Like not not being uh, not being truthful or um, uh, you know, being a, a, a good person, right? Like cheating on someone is still cheating, yeah. right? You can't be like, oh, this is my play. Right? So basically, so. playful within the boundaries of what you communicate to your partner. Yeah, but it's yeah. still establishing those boundaries before you commence with play. Yeah. I'll, I'll go up to a man bun hipster and be like, can I play with your oh. hair? Oh, you will get many yeses. 
<laughs> play with your hair. I've asked a few guys if I could play with their hair and guys are very strange about their yeah. hair. They're like, don't touch. Well, guys with man buns will not let me touch their buns. They all will not. Want, all want and that's all I want to stick my finger in their buns. Why is that so hard? <laughs> Michael, any takeaways from you? Um, I don't, I, I kind of have a takeaway, but it's in a, in a story. Um, I just want to tell a quick story of one of the most playful times that ever happened. Uh, I was in Florida. I went to um, a Gainesville Improv Festival and I saw these people running around and I went up to them. I started playing with them and I met this one girl. She was really pretty. She hands me her card and on her card, it says musician, um, artist and adventurer. And I look at her and I says, do you want to go on an adventure? I just started saying hi to her and she's like, yeah, let's go. So we start walking. We have no idea where the hell we're going because we're, we're at this improv festival and we find like this like bat tower and stuff like that. And I'm, we're talking and I remember at one point I looked to the right and I see like a field and these lights that aren't on. I was like, I'm wondering, I say, I wonder if those turn on uh, if, if, if they're censored. And she's like, let's go check. And she just runs off. And she's running down the right side of, of the field. I'm running down the left side of the field. And we meet in the middle and we just start making out. Was this my ex-girlfriend? <laughs> yes. So one of the takeaway is play can mean whatever level you're comfortable with. I think that's right. what I got mm -hmm. from this. Because right. Michael's story of play is definitely very different than what happened in the like orgy. orgy but we, yeah. were, but we were, didn't have an orgy. Well, I'm just but saying it's a, right, right, but but saying it, it can be a fluid structure. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, so let's wrap this up. Thank you so much, Chris, for telling yeah. us about Orgy Dome. Now, I, I, I've always wanted to go to Burning Man. I've never been, but now I have more reason to go. Yeah. Yeah, I like will, I, how are, are condoms provided? I just want to make sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, They're everything. Everywhere. Probably safer than your own home. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure that there are no weird... Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm down. Don't forget to, that you can submit your stories and remember that we can always keep you anonymous so that your name would not be going anywhere in the ears of our listeners. And we want to say thank you, Chris, for coming onto the show. We really appreciate it. That was an awesome story, man. Thank you so much. You're a brave, brave man. <laughs> and last but not least, stay terrible. Your action item for this week is to bring out your playful side a little bit. Channel your inner five-year-old and just see what kind of dynamic you can create with the people around you. The most efficient way to meet new people is a combination of online and offline. 500 Brunches has your offline covered. Connect over brunch with new friends. Come alone or bring a buddy. There is always a table full of friendly faces, mimosas, and eggs benedict. Sign up at 500brunches.com and use the code DATEABLE for a free entry. To connect with us, visit datablepodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all under Datable Podcast. Mm -hmm.